May is Brain Tumor Awareness Month, so for the rest of the month, all my case studies are gonna be on brain tumors. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 35-year-old female who came to my office complaining of headaches, and she had an abnormal CAT scan. She noticed a growth above her eye that's slowly gotten bigger over the past few years. It's very firm when she rubs it, and it does not move. Here's a sagittal CT scan, and what we're looking at is this part of the skull. So here's the eye, and then here is this thickened part of the skull. Here is the axial cuts, which basically means we are taking sequences looking across this direction, and you see this really thickened part of the bone, and this is an osteoblastic lesion. What does osteoblastic mean? If we talk about how a skull lesion looks, we classify it as osteoblastic or osteolytic, which osteoblasts build bone and osteolysis is where there's disappearance of bone. And that can mean two different types of skull tumors. It basically helps us decide what tests we may need to do to work up this type of tumor. The differential diagnosis of osteoblastic lesions includes all of these things, such as Paget's disease, skull metastasis, fibrous dysplasias, osteomas, osteosarcomas, or meningiomas. That's a lot of words. Let's go through those differential diagnoses and see what we think. Paget's disease is a disease of the osteoclast, and basically your osteoclast can go nuts and build bone in all kinds of places in your body. Because in this disease process, your bone turnover is really high, your alkaline phosphatase in your blood will likely be high. Therefore, we can screen for this with a blood test. I showed you her MRI scan where we saw that this is only in the bone, meaning there is no invasion of the brain underneath the skull. It does look fairly well circumscribed, so it is amenable to resection. Given her age, the size of the tumor, and the fact that we know that it has grown, we recommended surgical excision, and I use the assistance of a plastic surgeon because of its location. We did a wide excision of the mass and a skull vault reconstruction. So what do we find? This was an interosseous meningioma. The meninges are the coating of the brain and meningiomas are fairly common brain tumors. And the good news is, is they're completely benign. However, primary interosseous meningiomas or meningiomas that are purely just within the bone are extraordinarily rare. So why would an interosseous meningioma be only in the skull and not including the dura? It's thought that during development, there can be trapped arachnoid meningothelial capsules within the cranial sutures. Now, I don't know if I believe this theory because the large majority of interosseous meningiomas don't really occur on a cranial suture. And this particular patient's was not in a suture line. It was right above her eye. Really, the only way to diagnose this is by excising the mass and sending it for pathology. We did a wide excision of the skull to make sure that there was no remnant cells left within the skull, so this thing can't come back. And intraoperatively, the dura was completely normal. The best news here is that she's cured. Patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week, and I'll go through another case.